Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha Lucier, and welcome back. So glad you're here. My beloved is here, and we are excited for Lab Day. Yay! Hallelujah. Okay, <laughs> next Lab Day. We just did a Lab Day, but that was a breakout session. But this is the... the the, the actual normal, lab. Yeah, the normal style lab. This is lab number seven that'll be covering episode 70 through 74. So before we get started, um, my love, will you open us up in prayer, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and for another opportunity to gather together with all those listening in your presence. Lord, we ask you to still the hearts and the minds of your people mm-hmm. so they can hear your word fully. Mm-hmm. We ask you to open their, their eyes and their ears as we welcome you and your Holy Spirit into this place mm-hmm. to hear all that you have for us to hear. Thank you, Lord. All the wisdom, the knowledge, the, the guidance, the counsel. And with it, we ask for you to give us the understanding to help us grow and become more like your son, Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. You're the one that provides the increase and the growth in our lives. And we humbly submit and yield to your leading and guiding. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get into this lab. Um, Something that you're going to see in this is that we are making gradual changes to prayer time and focus with each lab. (laughs) This is intentional. (laughs) We're not um, wandering around. Uh, We are moving as the Holy Spirit leads us. Um, But there's a reason that the Lord is guiding us the way that he is. In addition to understanding the truth of God's word, we must also develop spiritual discipline in governing ourselves inside and out and discipline in applying the word to every situation in our life and throughout our life consistently. We must also build up uh, or be built up in a way that causes us to be evenly developed. Well-rounded is a way that we might typically describe that. And being well-rounded and dis- disciplined is what leads us to the outcome of spiritual ma- maturity and becoming an elite warrior for the Lord. The Lord does not, again, want us to be, you know, Popeye arms and string bean legs or, you know, one arm that's well-developed, but the rest of the body has never seen the gym. Or you, or you know. can only do one thing. Now, I will say this, even with training for special forces or whatever, there are things that each member of the team has a special or specializes in Mm -hmm. a specialty Mm -hmm. has, they have Mm -hmm. a a specialty that, that they do. I won't say that no one else can do it, but that's, that's the thing they're, they're the best at on that team. Mm -hmm. Now I will also say this. Everyone else is also cross trained in everyone else's job and role. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in the event that, you know, something happens, someone else has to pick up, and carry that that role. They may be, if you will, wearing multiple hats, mm-hmm. as in fulfilling multiple roles on the team during that that mission set or whatever that uh, operation calls for. Amen. And it's no different here in the body of Christ. We're all to be well rounded mm-hmm. and able to do all of the work that we're called to do. Mm-hmm. The Lord should be able to use us, <laughs> however He sees fit, whenever uh, He sees fit, and any gift that the Holy Spirit leads a- as He leads. Amen to that. So here's some of the areas that we are building discipline and establishing principles in your walk with Christ. One, we're developing your ability to always hear clearly from the Lord. That is something that takes practice and diligent effort. It's not going to just happen automatically. It's something that you have to pursue and be aware of and persist in. We're also increasing your awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not someone who comes and goes, he abides, he remains and he dwells, but recognizing and being ever aware that he is present 
definitely changes how you carry yourself and it changes your interaction with him. We are establishing and increasing your reliance on Holy Spirit. He's not an afterthought or the last (laughs) ditch effort. He is the first effort. He is the first response. He is the first and foremost and preeminent um, part of our life, God and the fullness of the Godhead. Um, We are increasing your absolute trust in the Godhead and the Lord's willingness and ability to love, protect, provide for, guide, and sustain you in every area of life. We're outlining the framework for proper internal posture and approach to God in prayer. We're building a consistent routine of prayer and communion with Holy Spirit in your life and establishing and building your diligence in consciously obeying the leading and guidance of Holy Spirit. These are things that are, oh, what's the word? Foundational, pivotal, like required in the life of a warrior of God. Because remember, a warrior and a, an elite warrior at that is not the run of the mill Joe, I'm just here. They're right? not your conventional forces that are doing their job in the most minimal way possible. <laughs> the least effort required. To still required. receive the paycheck and stay out of trouble. Exactly. But these, all everything that was there that you, you just went through, honey, if you could sum it up in one word, it is action or active, mm-hmm. not passive. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a diligence and a consistency in not just the structure, but the posture mm-hmm. taken. It's active, and we need to be active Actively looking and listening for the Lord and what he says on what he wants us to say and do. Mm-hmm. And to be willing and obedient to go do it yep. and say it. Amen. Being aware of his movement. So the word posture, if you can think about it, um, how it applies to our physical body. Someone's posture is how are they sitting or standing? So you might see someone who is slumped over or slouching in their chair. Their shoulders are curved in and drooping. Their spine is curved. Their knees are slightly bent. Their arms are dangling by their side. That posture is a posture that you might see often. They're just slouching in their chair. Um, their eyes are looking down at their feet or wondering, looking at the clouds or a fly buzzing around the room versus the posture of someone who's standing up straight, their shoulders are back, their head is up, their eyes are looking um, and scanning the room. They're looking for what needs to be done and they are focused in the way that they are taking in information. They're listening to their surrounding surroundings. Their feet are pointed in the direction that they plan to walk or move. You could say they are even lean forward mm-hmm. to immediately move in that direction. Mm-hmm. It was a, a, another aspect of the posture. Or there's someone that's completely checked out and they could be leaned back in the chair with their feet up on the desk or even mm-hmm. laying down. Sleeping. Or- right. <laughs> or, or at least with a hat over their eyes or something to, mm-hmm. to block out the light and, and get some rest. Mm-hmm. All those are different postures. Mm-hmm. Which one are you in towards the Lord mm-hmm. and, and what he wants you to accomplish on the destiny track for your life? Amen. So that should be one of attentiveness, confidence, Mm-hmm. Comfort, but also um, respect for the authority Reverence. and the leadership. Amen. Amen. That that rests in the Lord. Um, so the prayer time this week is, or this lab is the same as it was for lab five, I believe. And we're going to gradually increase um, the the general prayer time that we have. But then you're also going to see that we'll have some specialized things. Prayer is not something that we do every once in a while. And there is a need to develop good habits in prayer. Amen. And so, so now we said it's it's the same as five. That was one hour or is one hour as Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the minimum (laughs) for the week. And this is dedicated prayer time. So set the time aside in your schedule to come before the Lord and hear from him. Not talk his ear off, Mm -hmm. but hear from him. Hear what he has to say. And there are different kinds of prayer, but this is the kind of prayer that will open the door for you to be able to pray effectively in other uh, venues or or types of prayer when you can cooperate and and flow with God in this this, uh, manner. And it'll also bless your life. Um, This... This lab, we have a prayer point and focused action that is very important. Honey, will you talk about that for us? Absolutely. So in all training, right, 
but especially as it pertain, pertains to the kingdom of God, right? We as his warriors or being trained up to be God's warriors for his entire army mm-hmm. must walk in absolute obedience to the Lord in every area and aspect of our lives. Mm-hmm. So that begins working on small things, right? If we're in basic training or boot camp or whatever, right? You're on green team prep. You're right. There are specific things that you must wear, right? The, the quote unquote uniform of the day, right? So it, it could be PT gear or a physical fitness, right? Physical mm-hmm. training gear. Mm-hmm. It might be uh, certain types of uniforms, right? But all those things matter, mm-hmm. right? Because it's, it's about attention to detail and are you able to listen to instructions, whether they are spoken, uh, as in to the, the entirety of the unit, the group, mm-hmm. were they in passing, as in passed down, or, or in passing, right? Or is it just written on a board, but you saw it, observed it? Well, we have both the Lord's written word, but he's also speaking to us. So as it pertains to prayer and our focused action for this week, let's start with those small things and give them to the Lord. Lord, what do I wear for the day? Mm-hmm. What do you want me to eat for lunch? Right? Let's ask the Lord and, and receive right from Holy Spirit his perspective and desire about any action we take before we take it. Before is the key. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, it may be frustrating initially, mm-hmm. right? Because you're like, well, I'm, I'm grown. I, I know I've been, Lord, you've given me a brain and I can use it to make choices and decisions. True. Yes. <laughs> but is that your will or his will? Mm-hmm. Because we are to submit our will to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And the if it is frustrating, those those thoughts, right, feelings or whatever of anger, irritation, frustration mm-hmm. are things that clearly we need to deal with before the Lord to have them worked out of us. Mm-hmm. So we can just be renewed in our mind, reborn in our spirit, and fully submitted to the guidance and leading of Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the soul will try to act out just because it's used to being in control and it wants to maintain that power. Well, why do I need to ask you for this, God? Why do I need to care or, you know, take the time to ask? I I think I should ask about more important (laughs) things. But the truth is, is if you won't ask in the little things, you won't ask in the important things. It's an impossibility. if you do dare to ask, it won't be with any real um, faith behind confidence that you'll hear from him because you haven't trained yourself to hear from him on a regular basis. So... Excuse bless me. Bless you. Thank you. God bless you, honey. Um, so the Lord is uh, here to help us, and he is not here to bonk us on the head. He knows how to guide us and train us. And um, But this is the structure, right? And it's mm-hmm. part of the structure and the posture that we were just talking about, because mm-hmm. the more we do that, the more mm-hmm. we submit to the mm-hmm. Lord's leading and his mm-hmm. will and hear what it is and are willing and obedient to obey it, it becomes natural, like breathing Mm-hmm. to to the individual to just, hey, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say and do here? And w- by doing it, we will become more diligent, more consistent in that action, and it becomes a structure, a foundational structure for every area and aspect of our life and ministry. Amen. Amen. And I'll, I'll say it like this. You know, this is something how the Lord ministers to me. Any Any flesh... And he, he just says, Kamisha, your ideas are dumb. <laughs> Anything you get out of your flesh and your soul is not going to work. It's wrong. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sin against the Lord. And it's not going to be effective in the way that you desire. But his ways always win. His I ways always that. work. <laughs> so, you know, I had, I had my fill of being my own God. Oh, yes. And I, did, I was not very good at it. My life was in a the outcome was miserable horrific. mess. <laughs> Absolutely. But when I started letting God be God in my life, things turned around and I can, I enjoy my day. And it doesn't mean that everything is hunky dory rainbows and gumdrops and there's never any obstacles to overcome. But I always know that I'm going to win. I always know that I'm in, in line with God and I don't have a reason that I have to repent before him. And he's pleased with what I'm doing and he's going to handle the matter because I'm being obedient. Exactly. It's, we move from victory to victory. 
And there's there's no well like kind of one. I'm mostly one. It didn't cost me that much mm-hmm. in the process, but now there's all these things to repent from. You're clean, pure, without spot, blemish, or wrinkle in your spirit, soul, and body, and you see the victory. Amen to that. And God gets the glory. So that's a win, win, win situation, but it does take effort to retrain your soul to be subordinate to your reborn spirit and to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, and it allows your spirit to get bigger on the inside of you. Your, your physical body only does what the biggest part of you, the biggest internal part of you, um, says. So if your soul is in charge, your body is going to be connected to your soul and it's going to follow soulish um, lusts and desires. Well, but if I'll your spirit it, is in charge, it's going to follow God. Let's let's say it also this way, right? And there's the natural term, right, for training, especially for a military entity, is you train till it becomes a muscle memory. Mm-hmm. Where that is the go-to, it just happens naturally without even thinking. Well, we need to train ourselves to this standard so that it is muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And and by muscle memory, I mean, it's really spirit memory because then our spirit is bigger than our soul as it is. And it is leading and guiding because it is the thing that is directly connected to the Lord. So it is what is going to drive the bus Mm -hmm. because it's in tune with the Lord, his Holy Spirit ministering to you Mm-hmm. Spirit first, then soul, then body. Amen. Everything else coming in, in alignment, and you're moving forward, happening, uh, I'll say, uh, at the speed of the spiritual realm, which is <laughs> Amen. incredibly quick. Amen to that. So as you are working on this, and this is something that is going to be a continual process that you're working throughout your walk with Christ to become even more diligent than you were before, to obey God even more than you did before, and um, take every opportunity to submit yourself, your mind, will, your emotions to God in all things. Um, So here's a prayer to help you with that. Lord, help me become diligent in my obedience to you. Mm -hmm. Help me to hear your voice and to have joy as I walk with you in this process. I love you, Lord, and I am grateful for your presence in me and my life. I value what you want for my life, and I want to hear your perspective, and I need to hear what you have to say. So just thank God and receive that by faith and pray that as you are encouraging yourself to go on the way. Amen. There's a similarity here in in what was just prayed to what David says often, right? Especially in the Psalms. Or teach me your ways and your thoughts. Mm-hmm. They are not my ways, but they are higher. And that's what we really want or should desire to see in our life. But especially those that are God's warriors are going through the train mm-hmm. to become God's warriors, elite mm-hmm. warriors for his end time army. This is, a, will say, a foundational that's right. key principle and standard. That's right. That's right. It's essential to your, your success and your strength and foundation. Okay, so we have questions this week in this lab, and then there's also a project, and we'll go over the project um, right now. So for the project in this lab, we are going to work on retraining and renewing your mind about your lifespan by writing and using a daily confession. So the steps to um, writing a daily confession is... We have eight steps listed here, so we'll just go over those really quickly. Um, Step one is determine (laughs) to live until you finish the calling the Lord assigned to you and you are satisfied with long life. Comes down to choice, right? We've been talking about this since, well, the beginning. Amen. And step two is choose to live at least 120 years unless the Messiah returns first. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) That's an important caveat to note. If Jesus comes back, there's no reason for you to be here. That means you missed the boat. Oh, yes. (laughs) Definitely not trying to stick around (laughs) here after. Exactly. No, no, no. 120 years unless the Lord comes back first. And if you want a little bit more than that, you take that up with God and believe him for the the grace to do so because he's a generous and good and loving father. But, but if he returns, but if he returns, 
I uh, strongly encourage you to head along with us That's and right. re-enter the heavenly community. That's right. 120 years is a moot point <laughs> <laughs> if, he's, it's, if, if, if he's coming back first. Um, let's see. Number three is take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to help you write your confession. The Word of God says, ask and you shall receive. Asking and receiving is an important component of our walk because the Lord said that is the process. Don't just go, well, if God wanted me to have it, he'd give it to me. No, no, no. No. You have to engage your personal will and your faith by taking the time to ask. So when you ask the Holy Spirit, be confident that he heard you and his answer is yes, and so be it. And he's with you as you go about um, writing your confession. Number four, um, your confession should be based on the word of God. So search for scriptures about long life, health, strength, mental clarity and focus, and use them to write your confession. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith is not based on what you think, what you heard, what your mama and them said, what somebody told you one day. God is not obligated to honor anybody else's word, but his own. So when your word aligns with his word, then it'll be honored, right? Because he's keeping his own word and you happen to be in alignment with him, but he is obligated to do what he said he would do. Amen. Amen. Number five, your confession should be written and spoken in a positive present tense form. So avoid talking in negative tense, say things like, don't do this. Don't do that. Like if you just say that out loud to yourself, you can feel internally that your inward man turns downward. And it's kind of like, no, but if you speak in a positive sense, as though you're moving forward and the word of God to you is yes. And amen, you will hear your spirit turn upward on the inside and your, your soul is able to go, okay, I see a way forward and to come into agreement with what the word of God is and what the soul is, I mean, the spirit is trying to bring forth in the physical body. So speak in a positive present tense form. And number six, as you compose your confession, look for Holy Spirit's confirmation in your spirit. So as you're looking over the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will confirm that's the scripture that I want you to use for your particular life and situation. There are things that are unique to you that only God knows where you currently are and the destiny track that he has for you. So he will tell you which scriptures to apply. And then when you go to write out the sentence form, he will guide you in how to articulate it so that it is absolute spiritual truth and that you are in perfect form and alignment with what his will is and his plan and that is word. And then when you have that, you know, for 100% certain that it is assured and guaranteed to you because you are only saying what the Lord says to say and do. Um, number seven, don't try to make your confession. See that (laughs) I said that, um, how that feels, try to keep it simple. Uh, avoid being overly complicated and just allow the Lord to minister through you. Don't try to write one sentence that captures the whole world, right? <laughs> just <laughs> You don't because. need to be verbose, and it's not about being super eloquent. Exactly. The Lord's got all that covered exactly. in his word. That's right. That's right. So keep it simple. Review and speak your confession daily because you've already gotten the word of God on it. You've gotten confirmation on the Holy Spirit that you're rightly applying that word to your life and you've taken hold of the right scripture that applies to you. Um, So take the time and speak it over yourself daily and memorize it as you go. It's not about convincing yourself that something is true. Your spirit man already and already uh, always knows that God is right. The Your reborn spirit is alive to God and it only wants to do his will. Your soul, on the other hand, that's your mind, will, and emotions has been taught bad habits and has picked up things that are not true that have to be Uprooted from your life. That's right. And the mind has to be renewed and reformed to accept and think the way that God does and to be confident to know that what God's way is and what God says is absolutely right. Uh, The word of God talks about where two or more gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. And Mm -hmm. if we agree on earth concerning anything that it's done for us. Well, the first agreement that needs to happen is within us. Amen. Because if my soul is at war with my spirit and there's constant bickering and back and forth, I'm a double-minded person. 
And the double-minded person should not think to receive that they're going to receive anything, anything from God. They're unstable in all their ways. That's right. And every time my spirit man wants to go forward and do what God says, the soul tries to throw a hiccup in the and way. And say, oh, but we've always done it this way. Uh-huh. Or this thing. Or uh, whatever right. it is. And, and we'll try to drive the boat away from what God actually said and what God wants. What God said and what God wants has life in it. It Amen. always brings life to us, his and children. life abundantly. That's right. But the soul is connected to a life of death, and it needs to be taught not to do that anymore, to hold fast to life. So we are retraining that soul, the mind, will, and emotions to agree with God and to agree with your reborn spirit so that the body can follow suit. And amen. the whole part of you, spirit, soul, and body is going, yes, and amen, God. Yes, and amen, <laughs> God. We are going to live. I'm going to live a long life. And your spirit speaks that through your mouth. Your soul goes, mm-hmm, that's right. And your body begins to align in health and healing with what has been spoken over it. The word says that we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. We're made in his image and his likeness. So that means that your world, what you experience in your daily life is framed by what you say, by the words of your mouth. And that's the fruit that you're going to eat. The body knows to respond to the truth coming out of your mouth. The body knows to respond to the word of God, but it has to be trained and it has to be given the opportunity. So when you start speaking long life over yourself and health and strength that comes from God, your heart's going to get in alignment. Those joints, if anything's out of a, out of alignment or out of array with the, the complete and total health plan of God, it's going to start driving itself back to what the word of God is because your soul believes that it's the case and it's not fighting you on it. The body's going, I'm doing what the bigger part of me says, right? Amen. So let it be so. And the, the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you to bring it to pass. And we've already discussed previously about taking communion and um, how to receive communion over different areas of your life that need um, a boost of faith and that need a direct action. So take advantage of all of these things so that you are fully fit to do what God asked you to do. You may have had skill to be a warrior, but if you're not able to be on the battlefield now, you do no, you do no good. You're not doing any effective work. But when you're strong and you're in your best shape and fit spiritually, mentally, <laughs> emotionally, and physically, Amen. now you're able to get down to some business on and the Lord's behalf. On the, uh, exa <laughs> Exactly. In direct alignment, divine order with the Lord and his plan and his perfect will, Amen. his covenant. Amen. Amen. That is a, I'll say a force to be reckoned with, but Hallelujah. You, you can't, you cannot reckon with it. It is it's the Lord God's force. It's overwhelming, and it, nothing can stand to it. That's right. That's right. And um, honey, go so ahead. so in going over this this project, all right, and how to retrain or renew our mind, right, and how to write this confession that needs to be. Oh, I, I, we strongly encourage you to re, not just review it, but to speak it daily. Mm -hmm. Right, your concerning own. yourself, mm -hmm. and we're going to help start you off. Uh, exactly. So we'll give you an example. Right, still your heart and your mind. Repeat these words at, as we say it, and it will use use it as a baseline for your own. Right. Mm -hmm. it says the Lord, my God, is my refuge. I set my love upon Him. My God always satisfies me with long life and shows me his salvation. The Lord is fulfilling my days here on the earth in health, joy, and strength. Daily I experience the goodness of the Lord because he is with me. The same Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead is living and dwelling in me. Daily, he energizes me with his ability, health, and strength. I have the mind of Christ. My mind is clear and fully focused. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. And add to that whatever the Holy Spirit 
um, ministers to your heart, whatever word he brings to you, incorporate it. And you see the, um, the steps that we described earlier are presented here, an example of what your um, confession should look like, sound like. Feel free to use what's here and add to it. Feel free to, you know, <laughs> substitute and take out, and, you know, something things. The Lord's like, no, you don't need that, but this is what you need. This is the area that you're struggling in. So put this there instead. Listen to what he says and put this, um, write it on a piece of paper, a sticky note, index card, and post it in your house somewhere. I recommend that you make multiple copies. Put one <laughs> put one in your purse or your wallet. Put one, you know, tape it to the ma- the mirror in your vehicle in the bathroom. under the visor or, or the back of the visor, whatever it That's is. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Now this is a, a short thing though, just a few points taken from Psalm 91. Mm-hmm. That you as as you said, honey, honey, you can use in in your own individual personal one. Mm-hmm. Or you can use anything else. There's there's all of Scripture. Amen. Let allow the Lord through Holy Spirit to lead and guide you for you. Amen. Amen. And tips for moms and dads. Um, put this in your children's mouths. Teach them Amen. to confess long life over themselves because it doesn't get any better, you know, than starting early. Seek him while it's early. And training them to learn to expect long life will help guide them towards it as they get older. And the Lord is able to minister on our behalf based on the words that we say, based on our faith and what comes out of our mouth. So putting this in their mouth and teaching them early will definitely help bless their lives. And Make this a tradition in your family. You know, do this for yourself. Teach your children if you have them. If you have parents who are getting older, share this with them and encourage them to put the word of God in their mouth and speak life over themselves because they don't have to crumple and grow old and fail. They don't have to do that. They can get out, leave this earth strong and full of vigor and strength and faith and joy and live the fullness of their days. So we want victory in every area and we're not willing to give up one ounce of that territory. Amen to that. Amen. So that's all we have for this lab. Um, It will be available online tomorrow. I do apologize about the delay for the communion lab, but it is posted online and um, the emails have been sent out and this lab will be going out today as well. So thank you for being here. We love you and we're praying for you. Remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. God bless you. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe.